Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're faking a particle disintegration effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based, and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, there's a link below for a free two-month trial for the first 1,000 people that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts, so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to be disintegrating a skull in this tutorial, but feel free to use any object you like. But for this effect to work, you'll need a pretty dense mesh. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Let's first hit Ctrl D on the keyboard and bring up our project settings. We'll be working at 24 frames per second, so let's change that. And we'll do the same up here in the render settings. So let's just bring that down to 24 as well. So now let's see what I mean by a dense mesh. If we come up here and turn on the lines, you can see this mesh is made up of loads of little tiny triangles. This is actually a ZBrush sculpt that's been decimated, but you'll also find loads of 3D models online with this kind of dense triangulated geometry. And this is really the key to this effect. These little triangles are going to act like little particles. So the more you have and the smaller they are, the better the disintegration you'll get. So if the model you want to disintegrate has pretty low resolution, you can always subdivide it a few times to give yourself some extra geometry. Okay, let's turn the lines off and start disintegrating this guy. So with our object selected, we'll head over to the MoGraph tab and we're going to apply a poly effects. And let's hold shift when we click on this so it's automatically applied. And this is going to allow us to manipulate all of those individual polygons. And it also allows us to use effectors to control the position, scale, and rotation of those polygons. So let's give that a try. With our poly effects still selected, we'll head over to our effectors, which in Cinema 4D21 are now hiding in here. And you can use any of these guys, but we're going to start nice and simple with a plane effector. And because we had our poly effects selected, that's automatically been applied, and straight off the bat, we're getting our fake particle look. And you can see these polygons have been pushed up. And that's because if we take a look under the parameter tab, we've got a value of 100 centimeters in the Y axis by default. And this alone can give you some pretty cool effects, but we'll just switch that off. We actually want to control the scale of our polys instead. So we'll switch on the scale controls, and we want to scale each polygon uniformly. So we'll check that on as well. And if we were to set this to negative one, the polygon should scale down to nothing. And then we can just animate them back on. And we'll do that by introducing some fall off over here in the fall off tab. And if you're using version 20 or above, you should have these extra options down here for your fall off and the ability to use the field system and get some pretty complex MoGraph effects. Again, we're going to keep this nice and simple and just bring in a linear fall off or a linear field. And now that started to bring our skull back. So let's just rotate this around so we can see this effect a bit clearer. The scaling effect is going from off to on within the space between these two pink squares. But we want this fall off to be a little less gradual and a bit sharper. So we can actually grab one of these handles and bring them closer together to tighten the effect up. So now we can animate this back and forth to transition that skull on or off. And that's going to be the basis of our disintegration effect. So now we can start layering on some more effectors and make this look a bit more interesting. So let's start by randomizing these polygons a bit to make them look a bit more organic. So with our poly effects selected, we'll head back up here to our effectors and this time we'll grab a random effector. And it's definitely started randomizing the position of our polygons but it's probably a bit extreme. Let's head over to the parameters tab and we'll bring these positional values down a bit. Let's try making all of these 10 centimeters. 
Now we also want to control which polygons are affected by this and not have them all affected at once. So we're going to add another fall off to this guy as well. So back in our fall off tab, we'll bring in another linear field and we want to rotate this guy around so it matches the direction of our plane effector. And we'll just tighten this up as well. And you can see how we've limited that effect to just here now. And we want our randomization to be just ahead of our plane effector. So now we could come up here and we'll just collapse these and grab both of them. And if we move them along together, both effects work in tandem to give us a more organic looking transition. Okay, so you can probably see where we're going with this. We'll put those back here and we'll layer on another effector. Once again, we'll grab our poly effects and head over to our MoGraph menu. And this time we'll add a shader effector. Then we'll head over to the parameter tab of the shader effector. And we don't want this guy to affect the scale of our polygons. So we'll switch that off and turn on the position. Let's go with 20 centimeters in X, 30 in Y, and 10 in the Z axis. And that's starting to give us an interesting look. But again, we want to control this with a fall off as well. So back over here, we'll bring in yet another linear fall off. Then we'll grab that guy and make sure the direction matches the others. And we also want to tighten this up and move him into the middle of the other two. Then we'll grab the shader effector itself and head over to the shading tab and we'll bring in a noise shader from our list here. Then we can click onto that noise and go inside there where we can edit some of the parameters. We'll start by changing the noise type. Let's make it turbulence and we'll bring the scale of that turbulence up to 400%. And this is just to add a bit more variation in there so it looks more like a particle simulation. Then to test this out, we'll grab all three of our effectors and drag them across our skull. And that's looking pretty good. So we're almost there. So we'll put that back and we'll add two last effectors. Let's grab our poly effects again and we'll bring in another effector. This time we want the time effector. As you probably guessed, this allows us to affect things over time. So if we were to hit play, although we haven't created any keyframes yet, these polygons are starting to animate and it looks like they're rotating. And we can see why if we head over to the parameter tab of our time effector, by default, it has these rotation settings active, but we actually wanna use our time effector to blow our particles up into the air as time goes by. So instead of rotation, we want to enable the position. And because we want this going upward, we'll add 20 centimeters into the Y direction. And again, that's affecting all of the polygons together. So we want to isolate this effect as well. So over to the fall off again, we'll add another linear field. And with that selected, we'll rotate it around the right way as well. Then we'll tighten it up and move that guy back here as well. So there's one last effector we're going to add to this for a little more detail. So grabbing our poly effects one last time, Let's come up here and bring in a step effector. And we can select this guy and head over to its parameter tab where we can see scale is enabled by default. But we'll turn that off. We want the position in the Y axis again. And we're going to make that 20 centimeters. And now we've got some nice stepped randomization in there. So just like we did with all the other effectors, we'll add some fall off to this as well. Again, we'll go with linear. And again, we'll rotate this around and scale this in. And we'll move this over here with these guys. So before we animate our final effect, let's grab our poly effects. And we'll just take a quick look at the effectors tab. And here you can see all the effectors that are affecting our polygons. So you can just double check you've got them all in there. And you can also rearrange these by moving them around. And they're actually calculated in order from top to bottom. So you can get some different looks easily depending on the order of the effects. I actually found reversing the order here gave me the best look. So let's quickly do that. So now our step effector comes into play first and our plane effector last. So let's see how this all looks together. We can grab all of our effectors and hit Alt G on the keyboard to group them. And we can just rename this to effectors. And now we only need to animate this group rather than the effectors individually. So let's rewind back to the start of our timeline and we'll grab our group and head over to the coordinates tab. 
we want to animate this on the Z axis. So let's set a keyframe where it is now. Then we'll move forward to the end of the timeline and we'll just move this group all the way through the skull until it's completely disappeared. And we'll set another keyframe. And now we can rewind. And just before we hit play, we wanna make sure we don't have any easing on those keyframes. So if we right click over that and show the F curves, we can see that there is easing on there. So we'll just grab both of those keys and set them to linear interpolation by clicking on this button. And that should make the speed of our animation nice and consistent. So let's give it a try. And there you have your fake particle disintegration effect. And you can always mess around with the effectors to get different looks. And the best thing about this method is that you don't need to wait for anything to simulate like you might do if you use particles or dynamics. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And you can grab the final render ready project files for all of our tutorials, including this one on our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons. You guys are the best and we couldn't make these tutorials without your support. If you'd like to request a tutorial, post your work for feedback or get help with anything, you can join our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash CG shortcuts. That's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.